it's funny. But it like the things that you see and visualize will create a big impression on you. Like like I said, you know, our whole theme about this is to make art more accessible. Yeah. And elevating the world by making art more accessible. And I really believe in my heart that when people are exposed to new things and taking in new imagery, hmm. it will enlighten and change the way they feel and see about everything from that point on. Yeah. Or at least have some kind of effect on you. Because I know the power it had over me. Yeah. Um, I hope to do that. Another crazy thing, right? Because to me, I'm real big on installations, right? Yeah, yeah. I feel like like whenever we do an art show, I never just try to hang artwork on walls and right. it's boring and everybody's doing like right, it's right. boring to me. It's, yeah, squares on the wall, I get it, with some cute stuff in the middle. But when you go to the length of actually putting in a new structure so somebody can experience the show a different way, it changes everything. Yeah. Like, I've been in the space a ton of times, but for this show, I understand you created this entire wall yeah. just to heighten the luxury or the luxury of all what this art that we're taking in. Yeah. Yeah. It was uh, this wall. So everything is about these pieces are kind of like, you know, a high end wall that's trimmed out beautifully. Yeah, it is. And so it needed to be, it couldn't be on concrete. Right crappy bricks that are like this <laughs> so I had to right. I had to build a wall and that was a pain in the butt because the wall is crooked the floor is crooked you know I'm in a garage but to elevate it and it took I, I couldn't do it by myself it took a lot of help from friends yeah. to be able to make this as nice as it is as it is um, but I, I don't know it's yeah it's a whole idea it's a whole thought this whole wall is one piece yeah but wow. to be able to <laughs> make it into like separate things that are just as powerful on right. their own, like all of them together are more powerful than any one by itself. And that's like mm. the beauty of the, our, our ideas. Like we can come up with these huge ideas and if we just piece them out into smaller and smaller things, you can make something absolutely amazing happen. Right. It's just uh, tedious as hell. <laughs> <laughs> to cut it down into smaller and smaller chunks to make it uh, work. But yeah, this wall, this whole wall was one idea. And then how do I make that idea come to life? Um, how do I make each, session, each, each sesh, section its own piece that's beautiful and interesting and thought provoking, but that works with the whole thing? And um, part of that was these bottom panels, like I wanted it to be clean I wanted it to feel not too cluttered. If I put a piece on every one, it would feel like really messy and cluttered. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna make a piece behind a panel. So what would I put behind a panel, you know? So in a high-end home, it might be a safe, you know? Right. So, you know, these are pairs. You got, a, you got safe right and safe left. So they go together. They can go together or they can be separate. Uh, these could go with these two. Mm. So all four of them could go together, or each piece could be by itself, and it'd still work. So that was the other part of it was, how do I make each thing a small little like vignette that works by itself and with the other pieces? The stairs are actually the last thing I came up with, <laughs> because I was making these types of panels, and it was just like right. too much repetition of the exact same thing, I needed to break it up. So <laughs> I was like, what else do I have that I feel like would be a big piece that could break up the space and make yeah. make it feel uh each space feel unique and interesting so yeah the whole thing was this uh voyage into this world of opulence and but it's kind of tongue-in-cheek it's mm. kind of um cartoony mm -hmm. and over the top everything's kind of over the top um but you know having the pieces move um, and making them just really flashy and a little too big and you know I don't know so I don't know how to mm, yeah get, help me out here I don't I know so one of the things that was a favorite of mine about this show and uh, the, you know the artwork that you've been creating is that it's experiential yeah so it's like interactive artwork where it touches, moves, like, you know, you can experience it or be a part of it. Yeah. Uh, even where you have to stay where people can take a step on it, almost like uh, prom pictures. Right. right. <laughs> people was having on it. They're loving it. And then to this, this is amazing to me because it's 
artwork on top of artwork. Yeah. I know from the camera looking in, it looks like these are just panels that are made. And actually being here in person, it still looks that same way. But realizing that this is actually artwork on top of this piece to make it look as a so 3D panel. panel. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the everything I based everything actually toyed with the idea of having one perspective for the whole show. Mm. Where if you stood here, oh all God. the perspective from right. every piece would be right. But then I was like, that won't work if, yeah, for each individual <clears throat> piece. Right. So I made each individual piece perspective from about, you know, <clears throat> eye level down. I knew where these were gonna hang. So the bottoms are bigger than the top. The top is a shadow okay. and then you've got the sides. So you're getting that depth. So yeah. each of these panels is a painting with a painting behind it. That's and then so figuring cool. out how to hinge that mm. with the framer, like we had to do a lot of stuff to figure out how to make these happen and honestly, I wanted them to be as close to the wall as this. Right. I wanted it to be like, Flip. and it was almost no way to do it. Like we really, anyway, but it is 99% of my vision hmm. right here. And I, I think they're awesome. And I think I'll probably be pushing myself on doing something like this again. Yeah. So could we open it? We can. So this is the, the right safe. And that one's left. I love how there's small differences in, even in between these two from the uh, gradient on them. Yeah. The shadow on them because this is even sits back a little more. Yeah. And even that one just having different little marks on it too. Yeah. It's trying to make every single piece unique. Yeah. And interesting. They are mirror images of each other, but yeah. they are different. Yeah. These pieces are pretty cool the uh, the fish tanks mm -hmm. it's funny I think uh, I wanted to make sure that they work together mm -hmm. so it was like having the the chest on this side and the barrel on this side kind of brings them together so but, they play on two yeah so they work together as a pair but they also work separately and uh, having the two of them kind of interacting mm -hmm. uh, also the directions that they're swimming, right. there's a difference in where they where they swam based on the bubbles. Like, I like the idea of time passing too, because mm. you get a little bit of where they were as well as where they oh, are. All right. You know, and that to me, giving a little bit of time to it can also be really nice. So man, you making this scientific, man? <laughs> and these are layered. That's the other thing is like I, I can make things in the computer to exactly how I wanted to look, and then I try to figure out how to make it. And that's mm. kind of just how I do everything. And it's, how do I make this? Well, it has to be the background layer first, which is the blue. The entire thing I need to make blue, and then I need a gradation, so how do I make that? And so it's just like layering each layer on top of each other. And then when I'm done with it, I mask that off so mm. it doesn't get anything on it, and then I do the next part. So then it's mm. the, the bottom, which is the background of this, and mm. then it just layers from there to there to there. Yeah, next lighter color kind of a thing. And to then me, the last thing was the fish, you know, on top yeah. of all that. But. To me, it's crazy because it's like, take, like typically you hear an artist just being a person who, a lot of artists aren't very calculated. It's just straight from emotion and feel mm. and they just go. Right. And you think of a guy who's more calculated, you seem like you're probably really good with numbers. <laughs> like that isn't typically the guy who you would see doing this kind of artwork, but I feel like for those people who are watching who are like that and more detail oriented and uh you know want things to fit within specific lines and neatness yeah. and there's those type of artists yeah. too yeah there is that type of art like yeah. uh agnes martin mm -hmm. uh every single painting she did is like straight lines and right. it's just like gridded out everything but it's just the colors are beautiful and then it's the it's almost the perfection of it is interesting, mm -hmm. but they're they're just beautiful to look at, and mm -hmm. that's what it's about, you know. It was dope. made sense to her, so. So. But, um, stairs. Okay, so the stairs. The stairs. Um, <laughs> yeah, making it. The ideas behind it. Um, making it was a a pain because I couldn't move it mm -hmm. by myself, so I needed help with that. The shadows again, like the the layering. 
I did the outside first, all the whites and grays, and then I masked that off so I could just do the next part, which is the yellow, mm -hmm. and I masked that off, then I did the red. Um, that was the only way I could figure out to make it. Uh, but like even this, like even the red, you know, the yeah. whole thing is this color. We're, oh. Everything is that color. I paint that whole thing, and then I move in with the, Highlight. the highlights and the lighter oh. colors. And then this color yeah. is the highlight on, this, on these stairs. And on that, I did the whole thing, the dark, and I highlighted hmm. it with, the, you know. That's so crazy to me, like, how this shadow allows you to see this archway that we're looking in. That's so crazy to me. It's, it's really interesting how one little change yeah. here and here can yeah. make, you know, yeah. it pops your eye into a different realm. So. Yeah, man, I feel like you're going to have a show one day, somebody's going to run right into the paint. <laughs> Like a dog into a screen door kind of thing. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right into glass. Yeah. But this section over here. This section. We, the balloons. Okay. Uh, yeah. I worked with... Uh, so I did those in the computer. I sent them to somebody who could cut them out. And they made them into three really small panels. Hmm. And we put them together and we sanded the outside. I had help with that. And then it was like, yeah, painting them, putting the strings in. So... Yeah, just make them as real as possible. And they have the like, shadow at yeah. the top. I love that little shadow at the top. Yeah, for me, I, it almost seemed like it was like a little portal where it was coming out of it or something like that to me. That's, right. But, um, and just even how the shadows on these are different, like, even though you said, like, this is wood, this yeah. one right here is tilted to the side. Right. It gives it a more realistic perspective uh, in comparison to the other one. I was trying to... I want every piece to be unique and interesting. Yeah. So, how do I make each balloon its own thing? Yeah. So, you know, this one being tilted, that one being double, another one being by itself, you know, so, yeah, yeah trying to be creative within um, limitations. Mm. And I think I, I tried to do that a lot with the color palette too. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I brought the color palette to, I want it to be whites and grays golds mostly and this deep red and that's what I did a lot of this with and then I was like a pop of because that's all warm colors right. and white and like I want a pop of cool yeah so that was the blue mm. you know so um I tried to keep the color palette extremely minimal as minimal as I could um which I think makes it feel more clean and more impactful <laughs> you know right. so I do notice a bit of a transition, right? Yeah. I feel like with the last uh, group, or the last couple of pieces, it was treasure buried. Mm. I feel like we was pirates. Yeah. We took that buried treasure, we found it, and then we walked up the stairs mm. of life, climbed the, you know, the right. stairs to success, and now we balling and we having it. We just been having it for so long at this point that we got really nice houses with high ceilings and clean. Uh, clean walls. Yes. With beautiful things on them. Yeah, simple aesthetics. Yeah. And you know, Everything. little IKEA shelves to display our money. That's right. I will. Yeah, these were this is actually the very first piece, like concept wise that I made. Uh I made Come like a, so you started the whole I, show. The whole show was off with of the this nugget, right? Nugget. Yes. And now you built the wheel. I built the rest of it off of that because it was this is the encapsulates like the idea, which okay. is um it's putting, it's putting this thing up on a shelf mm. um, and putting importance on that one thing, you know? Mm. And I, I don't know if I'm questioning that or I want other people to just look at it or I feel like that's what our culture is right now. Or I don't know what it is yet, but it felt important to put out there and it feels true for some reason. Yeah. So, yeah, as soon as I put it together, I, I knew that that was right. And like I worked on the size, how big the nugget should be versus yeah. the size of the panel. Yeah. That was like two days. You know, wow. it's like, uh, it needs to be a little smaller. Uh, it needs to be a little bigger. Uh. So, yeah, that's exactly what it all started from was uh, this negative space, putting all of the emphasis <laughs> on this one thing and having it shine. Um, so, but yeah, and this side has has safes as well. These are like traditional safes. You know the uh, steel type kind of looking things, but um, what was cool to me when I first was seeing it was that 
you know, I didn't know about the sex under here. Yeah. And so I'm looking at these pieces like, oh, that's, that's dope. And he kind of extended the piece, you know, with something. It's almost like a dick kit. Yeah, and it's just, exactly, right. Yeah. Two makes just one. Even more negative space. Right. <laughs> and I, li I like negative space. Right, right. And, you know, you to me, I think you just like this mad scientist like everybody else does. And the door comes creeping open, real creepy. And it makes like the little squeak noise and everything. Like, yeah, yeah. Oh. And I try to catch it because I'm thinking, oh man, someone's like, I don't want it to fall. And I like this, my right, man, right. I don't want anything to be good. Right. And then it just like, so I'm like, I'm like, oh my God, so, it's a safe that. under there. I, I lost my mind, man. Yeah. I went crazy, couldn't believe that. And then when I went to the next piece and noticed, I see him behind that and I'm expecting another safe and oh no, that yeah. safe is open. Yeah, so this one, uh, so yeah, these two are mirror images again, but different, mm -hmm. different type. And then this one was the middle piece. What's it going to be? What's important about it? Where's it going to hinge from? Mm -hmm. So I thought about hinging it from below, hinging it from the top, hmm. uh, but working that out you know, mathematically and how are we going to do that in a show with the door down? Yeah. It didn't seem like it was a good idea. So we went from the side, but anyway, the ideas behind it, uh, the locket, I actually put these in. That was the last thing I did and I didn't even <laughs> know I was going to do that, but I think it just plays with the, I don't know. It's like a heart that's halfway in shadow and half coming out. Mm -hmm. I think the tick marks give it a story yeah. of like maybe a heartbreak, the okay. number of heartbreaks you've had or the number of times you've tried right. love and you know, and where you're at with it. I don't know, having it be halfway in shadow for, for me was interesting um, as a story. You know? My perspective, you know, because yeah. everybody comes with their own right. life, yeah. When I see this, the money is on display, it's the easiest thing to get. It's like you don't even care about it. It has no value to it. But the thing that actually is in the safe is this one thing in your heart. Mm. The thing that you should protect the most, the thing that has the most value. That mm. outweighs all of this stuff, the piles of money, everything. Right. And it's, this is the thing on display, you know, and even the light, like, I base this off of- I really of, like that light, by the way. Uh, thank you. Recess light, man, I'm in it. I, I base that off of, like in high-end homes, sometimes you see these recessed panels where they mm -hmm. put sculptures yeah. or a vase yeah. or something. And I was like, I want there to be a pile of money there. Just like, <laughs> to me, that, that, that was also like a thing that just felt um, like the story of the show, you know? Yeah. And, you know, these originally were, thought process was to be in Basel, yeah. at, uh, at Art Basel in, uh, a couple weeks ago. So... I was going to be putting them in front of, in the biggest art fair in the world, putting them in front of some of the richest people in the world that go and buy art and to put like, this is my, you know, not only that, but it's also, you're paying money. Right. This piece has value. So I'm giving them value. You know what I mean? <laughs> so there's also like that tongue in cheek play of what is value in our, you know, in what is art's value um, is... So I'm playing with all those ideas when I'm making all this, but what people take from it um, is very interesting to me. I'm not sure what you know everybody takes. Everybody takes something a little bit different. Yeah. So that's a pretty cool friend. Thank you. Yeah, um, I've had this idea forever. I love playing with the idea of gold frames because again, it's like a, like the superheroes are a symbol of each of us like achieving yeah. what we should achieve, like greatness kind of a yeah. thing. Uh, having them suffer means something, but these to me are like the art world, like gold frames that is like fine art, but doing it in a spray paint way, then it's fake. Hmm. It's not a real gold frame. Right. I think <laughs> it says a lot. Yeah, I want to be doing gold frames forever uh, hmm. because I think they're a symbol of the art world a little hmm. bit, like in a museum, yeah. these million dollar pieces by these artists from you know, all over time, they put them in a giant gold frame to signify how much they're worth, you know, right. and how much they care about them. And uh, to, to make it, it's kind of tongue in cheek because it's 
spray painted and it's not real, but it's like, what does a gold frame mean? Mm -hmm. What is uh, what does it mean when a frame is like a gold frame is almost bigger than the piece of art? Right. You know, because um, <laughs> it's it's no no longer highlighting it. Right. It's becoming the thing. Right. It's the thing. So that's interesting to me. But then making the artwork actually not there, having no artwork, having it look like you're just looking through it to the wall, but that's actually the work of art. The work of art is making you realize that there is nothing there. Hmm. So, yeah. So these are kind of just a. I think they're they're interesting to me. I don't know why, but I'm gonna make a lot of these. Yeah. They're just. And I think a lot of the things that we assign value to in this world are worth nothing. And things are only worth anything because we assign value to it. Totally. It's like we give energy to things. Yeah. Well, a lot of this stuff started. I was. Uh, I was reading this book, Sapiens, mm. and in it he talked about, um, bear with me, uh, yeah, take time. he talked about, um, you have all these, he was talking about middle, the middle of Europe and Middle East and all that when it started out, money, people would trade barley, you know, hmm. as things of value, you know, so I want apples. This person needs their shoes done. Well, I need to give them apples to get my shoes done. Wow. Well, then they started trading things that meant something, you know, to each one of them. So things, everybody used to barter when they needed things. Mm -hmm. then, then the empire coined a certain amount of gold or silver. Right. And they said, this is backed by the empire. Mm. So people could start using that. But it, the big thing was money's not real right like we made it up and the only right. reason it has value is because we decided it has yeah. value everybody collectively said okay it has value let's do it you know it works but if if tomorrow yeah. you decided that that dollar bills don't have value for you you wouldn't take them right. then they wouldn't have value to me because i right. couldn't give them to you, you for right. things so this idea that <laughs> we have decided that things have value and that we've made it made it up for ourselves but because we all believe it it's true yeah. the same thing is with art you know like certain art is valuable and is worth millions of dollars because we decided <laughs> it's worth 20 million dollars <laughs> right <laughs> and it's like well what that is so interesting to me Very. like how we just Extremely. the way we perceive something is actually affects the reality of it of the situation again all the art is like what's the perception and how can i affect reality with it and i uh, for some reason that hits home with me so yeah that's super dope man we could talk about that for like another it, it goes six deep hours it goes i deep. don't even chime in but you definitely hitting on something real strong like right. money isn't a real thing they're right. all just notes it's not backed by anything and i meant like no gold no silver no nothing but yeah on another episode man. so two things right this uh this chair is amazing hmm. um the power chair <laughs> Right, because like you take an idea right out of your mind and, and going from like a sculpture to something once again that's interactive, that's functional, that yeah. you can actually sit on. And, yeah. And during the show, a lot of people's coming to sit on. It's actually pretty comfortable. For it one. is very I'm, comfortable. You know, not gonna you know start be a salesman for it, but it's a pretty good chair. It feels <laughs> good, but it goes with the narrative. It's it, it it's real, but it also seems animated, even though we're sitting here in front of right. it. Um, the, I don't even know what you would call that, the little... The side table? Or yeah, the pot? side table. Side table. Also with the pot crack, like all of this kind of works yeah. in unison with each other. And how did you come about this, man? You go from, you know, creating this type of visual art to now you're creating furniture. And yeah. Like, this, uh, so these two, the pot and the chair, were collaborations with other people that... Uh, I mean, it's from my mind, and I. Mm -hmm. This is what I wanted, but I had to work with somebody who actually works in these fields yeah. to make it come to life. So, there's like a Mark Rowe is the, the guy's name. He's a loves furniture. He's a furniture maker. He's an upholsterer. He's got a shop down on 55 and Western, and he helped me make this thing come to life. You know, mm. make it real. So. I gave him like the base of a chair and I said, I want this chair, but I want the arms to be like this mm -hmm. big. And I gave him drawings and yeah. some little bit of measurements and we just kept going back and forth. And yeah. he would, 
take it down and he'd show me feet and he'd be like, is this what you're thinking? I'm like, no, a little, can you make the ends bigger? <laughs> and so he sent it, he's like, oh, okay, yes, that's what I want. And uh, make the arms a little fatter and make yeah. these a little, the wings a little bit higher. And <laughs> yeah. So just trying to push the, trying to push the proportions to like a cartoony uh, state yeah. to make it, again, something real feel like it's a little bit outside of reality though still yeah um but yeah he made it ergonomically correct like it's the right height for sitting it's super comfortable i mean like i'm, I'm ecstatic when he yeah. brought it here i was like you hit it out of the park man this is perfect so but yeah uh the pot um i have a friend who married a potter and they moved to wisconsin <laughs> basically okay. or they're together, and okay. they're in Wisconsin. I don't even know if they're married anymore, but uh, they, um, that's what they do for a living, and I asked her if there's any way she could make this thing come to life, and mm. it was this possible, and she loved the idea, and she was super happy about uh, being a part of what I was going to do. So, yeah, um, the crack, we, we had a couple uh, attempts on the crack, and she did all this by by hand mm. and cut out and carved and did, I was like, that is perfect because yeah. it was very um, crisp and solid at yeah. first. I was like, no, I want it to feel like it's yeah. really been, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. and really exaggerated. So, and then I got it here and I sprayed it, spray painted it and then put all the lines and things into to accentuate. So it looked mm. almost cartoony too. The table was, and it's a functional pot. They fired it and everything. It's actually mm. a functional pot. Um, the table I got off of Craigslist, I was looking for <laughs> something because I wanted the chair and the pot to be next to yeah. each other, next to this frame. Yeah. I saw it in my head as this and uh, this, I found it online like literally 10 minutes into looking and it <laughs> was right there on you to perfect. Grab, I just had to paint it, repaint it all. But the idea behind it was, I've already come up with this idea I wanted to do for pedestals. Right. So. A show I want to do in the future is like frames like this that are empty and pedestals like that, mm. they're empty too. And everything, it's like there's nothing to see here. You know, there's actually <laughs> no art here. <laughs> <laughs> so that, we'll see if I can do that in the future. But anyway, that that's kind of uh, something I'm pushing towards. So yeah, that was, that's why that came from. But yeah, I was making this whole vignette of how this feels, uh, where I'm actually using sculptures to have space, you yeah. know, things invade the space, um, things that you can interact with, sit in, yeah. um, things that you could actually put things in and put things on. So it's, I love this wall, you know, and then the balloon, yeah. I think it needed the balloon to yeah. create this, uh, triangulation. Yeah. yeah. Oh, to bring it. Yeah. To an, yeah. Completion. So, so yeah. Uh, I, I I think it's an amazing collection of work. It feels like a full body of work. It's a it tells a complete story. Like my favorite things is, you know, seeing art that connects. It has to, you know, you can't just have random pieces because they yeah. look cool. That also has to all connect. I feel like it's one sentence, you know. Right. Um, one body of work and it's all cohesive, man. Like that's super amazing. The colors all the same throughout man it just it was very very well orchestrated and i feel articulated as well thank you in the vision of having these things and you typically work in one medium and to say you know what i think i can create a piece of furniture mm. and then creating something that the people can come and experience where they can become a part of this picture that i've created so now everybody that sits into this is a part of the artwork and a yeah. part of the show I just, man, I respect your mind, the way you see things, your point of view, and all of it, and I always have, man. You Thank inspired you. me. Um, and I just think you're awesome, man. Thank you. Where can the people find out more about you? Uh, website is worksbyelee.com. Instagram is underscore e.lee underscore. Facebook is worksbyelee. Um, but yeah, direct message me, email me uh, from any of those places. So. But it's, yeah, it was fun to make it. Um, it's one big statement that I had to get out. Most definitely. And it's, it's out now. It's but out. Uh, I have another show, August uh -oh. 10th. Uh-oh. Uh, I'm working with Hubbard Street Dance. And um, 
So they're going to be dancing and performing with my pieces up. So that's another thing that's going to be pushing me, working with another Fine artist art. with yeah. another form of art. Yeah. So I'm trying to make it, uh, trying to push the boundaries a bit on everything. So. Keep pushing it, man. It's dope, man. Thank I love you. what you're doing, and I'm inspired. Thanks for coming. Good to see you.